Hi student, welcome to IGCSE Biology Intensive Seminar. Today, I would like to share some tips and tricks on how to answer question in IGCSE Biology 0610 paper. For IGCSE gradings, the candidate can opt for core paper or extended. However, all the candidates have to take three papers. Read A star A, B, C, D, E, F, or G indicate the standard of a candidate achieved at Cambridge IGCSE, whereby A star will be the highest and G will be the lowest. U stand for ungraded means the candidate performance did not meet the standard requirement for grade G. The first paper is paper 1 or 2. Paper 1 is for those students who opt for core paper and paper 2 is for those students who opt for extended paper. For this paper, students are required to answer 40 multiple choice questions within 45 minutes. 40 marks will be contributed for this paper and it will be converted to 30% of the total paper. Question will be based on the extended subject content, including the core and supplement learning outcome. And this paper will be assessing from grade A star to G. This paper will be externally assessed. The second paper is paper 3 or 4. Paper 3 is for those students who opt for core paper and paper 4 is for those students who opt for extended paper. Students are required to complete the question within 1 hour and 15 minutes. For this paper, students need to answer at least 6 to 8. 8 short answer and structure question mm -hmm. and 18 marks will be given for this paper which will contribute 50% of the total paper. Same as paper 1 and 2, question will be based on the extended subject content and it will be externally assessed with the grades from A star to G. The third paper will be paper 6. Students who opt for core paper or extended paper will be taking the same paper. For this paper, students are required to complete the paper within one hour. There is one to three questions that will be based on the experimental skill in section 4. Total of 40 marks for this paper, which will contribute 20% of the total marks. Again, this paper will be also externally assessed with the grade from A star to G. Now, let's dive into one by one on how to answer certain question. When you answer question, remember to keep your handwriting clear and legible. On the left side of the paper, there is a column marked for examiner use. Make sure you don't write anything in the left-hand side of the paper. Keep all your answers on the line on the question paper. If you wish to change your answer, remember to cross out your first answer by putting a line through it and rewrite. Remember, don't scribble over what you have written. Let's say if you have run out of space, you can use the white space on the another part of the exam paper for a continuation answer. Remember not to squeeze your answer by using a very small writing which will make the examiner's hard to read your answer. If you need to use a different space for a rewritten another answer or continue with your answer, Remember to put a note to inform the examiner where is the continuation of your answer. 
always remember you are taking biology at GCSE paper. So whenever you answer certain question, you need to always try to write as accurate as you can by using the correct biological terms. As I mentioned during class, don't use the words such as like it, they, effect, effect without further explanation. Because you always have to think about whether examiner can understand what you want to talk about. For paper 2 multiple choices question, always remember that there is no pattern in the letter's order of correct answer. The same letter could be the correct answer for several answers in a row. So, remember, do not let what you have chosen for the previous question influence what letter you choose. When you need to sketch a graph in the exam paper, remember to choose a simple scale which uses most of the grid. One box will be given if you use most of the grid. Remember to state the x-axis and y-axis clearly together with the unit. Students, remember that x-axis is for the manipulated variables whereby the y-axis is for the responding variables. Remember to plot the point exactly using pencil. Please do not use pen when you plot the graph. Try to join all the points with a line of best fit or a zigzag line. Remember that not all the curves have to pass through the point where the two axes meet. When the question requires you to write an equation, remember to read the question clearly whether you are asked to give either a word equation or a symbol equation. Remember, do not combine symbol equation and word equation within the same answer. For example, on your left side, it is an equation for the anaerobic respiration. On the top, it is a wrong answer because it combines the word and symbol equation within the same equation. The bottom is the correct example of symbol equation or word equation. Now, let's learn how to answer the question precisely. Always remember to give a precise answer to the examiner so that they can award you the full marks. For example, state why magnesium ions are important for healthy plant development. A lot of students like to give general answer such as they are needed by the plant or they are needed by the leaf. Ask yourself why they are needed by the plant or why they are needed by the leaf. You need to use the theory that you have learned during biology lesson to further explain this question. Some students answered, magnesium is needed to make chlorophyll. Why magnesium is needed to make chlorophyll? So, the ideal answer will be, magnesium is a raw material from which chlorophyll is made. Example number two. The fertilizer causes low oxygen and it affects animal in the water. So you need to ask yourself how and why they can affect the animals. So the ideal answer is the animal do not have enough of oxygen. Why? What happens if they do not have enough of oxygen? Remember that the animal need oxygen for their respiration. And how it will affect? If the animal do not have enough of oxygen, eventually they will die. Some students like to use a highlighted pen to highlight the keywords in the question. Unfortunately, 
highlighted pen is not allowed when you are taking a GCSE exam. So what you can do is using pen or pencil to underline or circle the keywords in the question. For example, please look at question 1. Name the tissue that transport the sugar made by photosynthesis to the other part of the plant. The first word name is important because this will tell you whether you should write a one word answer or you need to further answer the question. So since here they stated as name, so you can give a one word answer. So name the tissue, now talking about tissue instead of cell, that helps to transport and the keyword is transport sugar that made by the important process known as photosynthesis to the other parts of the plant. So all the underlying words are the common words or the biological terms that we use during biology. So give yourself three seconds to think about what is the answer. Yes, the answer is fluor. Talking about common words, there are several common words which is usually can be found in the exam paper, such as like name, state, define, describe, and explain. If the question asks you to name or state, usually you just need to give one or few words of the keywords or the biological terms that used in biology. If the question asks you to define the term, so what you need to do is to write the definition for the term. The definition of the biological terms can be found in your textbook glossary part. When the question asks you to explain or describe, you know that you need to further explain on the biological term. As I mentioned before, when the question asks you to describe the graph, so what you need to do is, you need to look at the pattern of the graph and explain the graph clearly. Marks will be given if you give a clear explanation. Remember not to use those vague words such as like eat, they, which you might not know what do you mean. Furthermore, I need to emphasize on the spelling. Even though this is not a first language paper, however, spelling is also important. Wrong spelling will not be given marks. Structured identification question also can be found in the exam paper, especially paper 3 or 4. So, students need to know certain structures of a plant or human body clearly, such as like the structure of reproduction organ, the structure of a heart, as well as the structure of a flower. Some questions might ask you to label or identify the part of the organs, such as like this question 4. Use the label lines to identify the flowing on the drawings of a flower, petal, sepal, and stamen. Three marks will be given for this question. So, student, you need to know the structure of a flower clearly. And you need to find the structures on a diagram of a flower that you may never have studied. Draw a label line clearly to the structure and write the name next to the labeling line. However, line is not given, but you need to write besides the labeling line. So be careful not to miss this question as line is not given. Remember, even though it's a biology paper, you still need to prepare calculator with you when you enter the exam hall. When there is a question require you to calculate 
the numbers, okay, you may need to find the figure from a table or from the graph. When two marks is given, remember to write all the working steps for your calculation because the working step also will give you points. As I mentioned during class, always remember to show the units in the calculation because in the marking scheme, they mention that units is needed. If the units are not given on the answer line, then you must make sure that you need to write them after your numerical answer. No units, no points. Sometimes you will be asked to carry out a calculation and add the result to the table. Always remember to express your answer in the same way as the figure given in the table. For example, in the table, the numbers is given in with two decimal points. So even though your answer is a whole number such as like 16, but you need to write the two decimal point like 16.00. If you use a calculator, remember to round up or round down the figure. Don't copy all the figure after the decimal point. Some question might require you to give the answer in whole number or one or two decimal point. Remember to read the question clearly and give the answer that they want. During your mock 1 exam, some of you calculate and give the correct answer. Why points is not given? It is because the question requires you to give the answer in whole number. However, some of the students write all the figure that's shown in the calculator. Please remember. And some of the students didn't give units after their answer, which also you will get zero for your answer. So remember, don't make this kind of careless mistake during your exam paper. Now, students, you may pause the video and take a few minutes to try out this calculation. Now, let's check our answer. First of all, you need to find the total volume of the solution in each test tube by adding the volume of the percentage protein solution and also the volume of distilled water. So for each test tube, it contains 5 cm cube of solution. So for test tube 3, first of all, we need to identify the volume of the protein solution, which is 0 0.5, divided by the total volume of the solution, which is 5.00. So by doing division, you will get the percentage concentration of the protein solution of 0 0.10. So for test tube 6, the volume of protein solution will be 4.00 divided by the total volume of solution in test tube, which is 5.00. So by doing the same division, the percentage concentration of protein solution will be 0 0.8. Please take note that during calculation and when you give the answer, you need must be given. However, if you need to fill in the table, you can avoid writing the units. So now let's try another question. This is the question from October, November 2018, paper 6 1, question 1. So based on the table 1.2, you need to calculate the percentage change in the volume of ribs each 84 days. You need to write your answer in the table 1.2 and show your working properly. You may pause the video and try to calculate the percentage change in volume. Okay guys, let's check your answer. The answer for this question is 22%. Did you get it right? Always bear in mind that when we calculate the percentage change, we need to find the difference. For example, like this question, you need to find the percentage change in the volume of grips, okay, the H at 84 days. So first of all, you need to identify the final volume and also the starting volume. So we can calculate the difference of the volume by taking the final volume minus the starting volume, which is 36.6 minus 30, which you get 6.6 .6 cm cube. In order to calculate the percentage in the volume, remember I always remind all of you, minus the final with the start, then divided with the starting volume. So final volume minus starting volume, you will get 6.6 .6 
over the starting volume, which is the 30 cm cube, times 100. So 6.6 .6 divided by 30 times 100, you will get the final answer of 22%. Always remember to add the unit for your answer. When they ask you to draw a table in the question, so always remember, use a ruler and pencil to draw the table. Do not use pen or free hand to draw the line because make sure you need to rule the lines for the columns and the row. One mark will be given if we are using ruler and pencil to outline the table. Remember to write the heading for each column and row of the table. Inside the heading, you need to write down the units. For example, like volume of water, bracket, cm cube, or ml. Time, bracket, minutes. The unit should be written after the oblique line. And remember, since you already mentioned the units at the heading, please do not put the units in the table space when you write down the number. Make sure you are using the same number of decimal places in each column or row. Means, some, for example, some of the question, it can be 16, it can be 16.5, it can be 16.25. So 16.25 contain two decimal places. So all your answer or all the numbers need to be two decimal space. So what you need to write, 16.00, 16.50 and 16.25. So all the numbers need two decimal place. If you ask to complete a tally chart for a recording data, what you need to remember again, you need to use ruler to draw the table and give a clear heading. How to do a tally chart? You need to record the number by using stroke and give an oblique line to represent 5. Remember to include another column to show the total numbers of the stroke. For table drawing question, usually 3 to 4 marks will be given. One mark is given if you draw the table by using pencil and ruler. One mark will be given if you are giving the correct heading together with the units. One or two marks will be given if you write down the numbers in the table space clearly and correctly. Okay guys, now let's try to apply whatever that we have learned just now. So this is one of the questions from October-November 2017 paper 6.1. You need to prepare a table to record the results shown in this figure and also this table. Your table should include the color intensity value for the crushed apple slice and the pH of the solution. You may pause the video and prepare your table and you may check your answer in the next slide. Okay guys, this is the answer that I have prepared for all of you. You may check if your answer is same as mine. Guys, remember to draw the table by using ruler. And also, you must provide enough of rows and columns in order to fill in the headings as well as your result. For headings, always remember you must add the units behind each heading. However, for this question, it's a bit special is because heading 1, we have the units of minutes. But for heading 2 and heading 3, there is no units will be used. Always remember to record your result based on the table provided and no units is needed for each of the column. When the question requires you to construct a line graph, remember to use a cross or a dot in a circle for your plot points. Students are not encouraged to use a single dot when they plot the point. Why? It is because a single dot may not be seen easily or clearly by the examiner when you have drawn your line. When the question requires you to plot two lines on the graph, 
Remember to use two different symbols to represent two lines of graph. And you must label each line carefully and clearly, or you can use a key. Remember, when you draw line graph, you need to use pencil. So, please use a pencil for both lines. Please do not use pen, whether blue or black pen, or even highlighter pen when you construct a line graph because it might not be able to show up on the scan screen. Remember to read the question carefully before you put a line in the graph. Some question may require you to give a straight line of best fit. Some may ask you to give a smooth curve of best fit, or some just need you to join the points by straight lines. Always remember to prepare a sharp pencil so that the graph that you draw will be thin and smooth. Remember that the line of best fit doesn't have to pass through all the points where the two axes meet. And do not extend your line graph beyond the last plot point. Not all the lines need to start from zero. And student, you must remember, x-axis is for manipulated variables and y-axis will be for the resulting variables. If you draw the graph upside down, you will not get any marks for that. Remember, besides that, when you label the axis, must always include the units. And another thing that all of you need to be aware is that sometimes they will ask you to draw a line graph based on a table. But, for example, some of the question, the table might give you the numbers of bubbles produced. But when they ask you to construct a line graph, they might change the story to they ask you to give the rate of photosynthesis or rate of respiration on this. So don't make the mistake of labeling the graph wrongly. So if the line graph asks you to give the rate of photosynthesis, please give the rate of photosynthesis instead of numbers of bubble. And remember, please do not squeeze your line graph. Please draw at least more than 50 or 70 percent of the grid papers given. As I mentioned just now, one marks will be given if you draw the graph as big as you can. But of course, don't exceed or extend the line graph. Now, it's time to apply whatever that we have learned. So this is one of the past year questions from October, November 2016, paper 61, question 1. You may pause the video and try to plot a graph using the data provided in this table 1.1. This is the answer that I have prepared by myself. You guys can take some time to check on your answer. Bear in mind that there are few things that you need to take note when you plot a graph. Bear in mind that you need to plot the x-axis and y-axis accurately. First of all, remember that your x-axis is recorded the manipulated variables, which is the things that you can control, whereby the y-axis will represent the responding variable, which is the result. Make sure that the scale must cover at least 50% of the grid paper in order to get one mark. For plotting, remember that you only connect from point to point. You do not have to plot the graph start from zero. Remember to draw a single smooth line without using ruler. Now, I would like to teach all of you how to differentiate between bar chart and histogram. Most of the time, IGCSE biology paper required you to draw the bar chart, but I can see some of you are drawing histogram in the exam paper. So, what is the difference between bar chart and histogram? For your information, bar chart have separate column that they do not touch. There is a gap in between each bar. For histogram, they have column 
but they will touch each other. Budget is usually used to show data on the discontinuous variables, for example, blood group, eye color, and etc. For histogram are usually used to show the data on the continuous variable, such as like length, mass, speed, and volume. However, you need to read the question carefully because they will state clearly whether you should draw a bar chart or a histogram for the question. Now I would like to show you the example of bar graph and histogram. So this is an example of a bar graph. As you can see, there is a gap between each bar and the gap between each bar need to be equals. As I mentioned before, remember the x-axis will be the manipulated variables and the y-axis will be the responding variables. However, in bar graph, if let's say they are giving you two different data to plot, you cannot shade the graph or color the graph. So, how what or what you can do in order to show the examiner or allow the examiner to differentiate between two different data, you need to label the data clearly at the axis. And always remember to write the title on top of the bar graph. Okay guys, let's try this question. This is a question from May, June 2019, paper 61, question 2. What you need to do is you have to plot a bar chart on the grid to show the average leaf area for species A and B at each light intensity. You may pause the video and have a try. Good luck! Okay guys, now check your answer. This is the example of bar chart that I have prepared for all of you. Check if you have did the same like me. Guys, always remember you must plot your x-axis and y-axis correctly. Always remember that x-axis is used for manipulated variable and y-axis will be the responding variables. Both x and y-axis must contain the units. You must state the clear unit clearly. For bar chart, remember do not shade the bar. You can differentiate different categories by labeling it precisely like what I did here, species A and species B. Remember that each of the bar must have the same bar size and also each of the bar must be separated by using the same gap. And remember the size of the gap must be always the same. This is the example of histogram. As you can see, there is no gap in between. When you draw a bar chart, remember to use a scale which uses most of the grid provided on the exam paper. Repeat again, please do not squeeze or make your chart become too small as mark will be given if you use most of the grid. And remember to draw the chart by using pencil. Remember to rule the column evenly so that they are having the same width. Please do not give a column with different sizes. Space between the column on the x-axis should be the same. And your y-axis should be properly scaled with equal interval and must be labeled clearly with the units. The lines or blocks can be arranged in any order based on the answer given in the table. But in order to make comparison, it helps if they are arranged in descending or ascending orders of size. Remember, as I mentioned previously, you must identify each block by putting a label directly underneath each block at the x-axis. Please, again, do not shade the blocks or color code them as it couldn't be skin, uh, seen in the scan script. If you shade the blocks or the columns, no marks will be given for your bar chart. 
when you draw a histogram, you need to choose a scale which uses most of the grid provided. And remember to draw the histogram by using pencil instead of pen. Same as bar chart, the x-axis represents the independent or manipulated variable and is continuous. Remember to properly scale and label with appropriate units. For histogram, the block should be drawn touching with no gap in between. The area of each block is proportional to the size of the class. It is usual to have a similar size classes, so the width of the blocks are the same. The block should be labelled by putting the classes ranges underneath each blocks or by putting the lowest number in each range under the left hand side of the relevant blocks, whereby the y axis will represent the number of frequency and should be properly scaled with equal intervals. And remember to label with appropriate units. However, bar chart is frequently can be seen in the exam paper compared to histogram. So student, please be careful and read the question properly whether they request you to draw a bar chart or a histogram. Sometimes the question might require you to draw a horizontal or vertical bar chart. Please read the question carefully. Planning and investigation question frequently can be seen in paper 6, alternative to practical. When you read through an investigation, try to find out three main things. What is being changed, which is known as independent or manipulated variables. What is being measured, which is the dependent or responding variable. What is being kept the same all the time during the experiment, which is known as control variables. For example, look at the example number 10. In a question, to investigate the effect of temperature on the enzyme activity. So, the independent variables or the manipulated variables will be the temperature. And the dependent variables or the responding variables will be the enzyme activity. So, what is the control variables for this Example. So since the temperature is something that you need to be changed and enzyme activity is something that you need to observe, so something that need to keep all the same will be the volume of the enzyme, the concentration of the enzyme, okay, the pH of the enzyme. And I remind all of you again, when we talk about something related to liquid, remember to use the words volume instead of amount. And another thing is that they might ask you how to maintain the temperature for the experiment. So how we should or how we shall maintain the temperature of the, the, the experiment, we need to use the thermostatically controlled water bath. When the question asks you to plan an investigation, remember to be specific and precise. Don't use the words such as like some, several, few, and same. You need to mention the numbers clearly. And also for manipulated or independent variables, please write at least three different options for the variables. Such as like, for this question, they ask you to investigate to the effect of temperature so you need to give me at least three temperature instead of two maybe you can give me example like 10 degrees celsius 25 degrees celsius and 37 degrees celsius don't just give me two because sometimes the marking scheme require you to give at least three manipulated variables option and also, when you need to give me the dependent or responding variables, you need to explain clearly 
how you can obtain the result example like the bubbles produce so how you can obtain or how you can calculate the numbers of bubbles being produced use a timer how long you need to calculate the bubbles 5 minutes 10 minutes you need to state clearly some investigation need to have two parts which are experimental and control experimental measured the process being studied and contains the living organism part of an organism or enzyme being tested for control it is exactly same as the experimental except that the living organism will be missing or replaced by something non-living the control show that the results are due to the activity of the living organism and is not due to the apparatus or an environmental factor for example when we uh, investigate the effect of enzyme on the rate of reaction for experimental it will be added with some enzyme but for control water will be used to replace the enzyme so that it can show that the result are due to the activity of the enzyme but it's not due to the apparatus or any other factor that might affect the rate of reaction always remember to mention that the experiment or the investigation should be repeated at least three times to increase the reliability of the result if the same result or similar result are achieved all the time then this experiment or this investigation are reliable the precision of result taking may not be very good for example if you are measuring using a syringe or measuring cylinder it may be difficult to measure down to the nearest cm cube always remember to give the quantity in appropriate terms as i mentioned earlier avoid the use of term amount Remember to be always precise and use the correct terms. When the question requires you to record an observation, remember to write down exactly what you can see based on the photograph or diagram on the paper. Some of the students tend to describe the color of the plant or color of the animals whereby the photograph or the diagram doesn't show the color of the animals or plant. Remember to describe the difference of similarity clearly based on the photograph or diagram. Measurement may need to be made and magnification calculation also be required. Look carefully at the pictograph. Sometimes magnification is given as some of the diagram will be enlarged, such as like times 100. If you are asked to calculate a magnification, remember, always remember the formula of magnification in your brain. So when you calculate a magnification, you need to follow these steps. Remember to measure the structure in the photograph in millimeter not cm look for the actual size of the object sometimes you will be given and sometimes they will ask you to measure the diagram remember to round up or round down the answer from your calculator usually magnification are given as whole number so please do not give the answer to one or more decimal places Actual sizes could be given as whole number or you could include all one or two decimal places. Last but not least, my students. Now, let's try on one past year paper which is May-June 2017, paper 6-1, question 1. Some students measured respiration in yeast using a culture of active yeast. Yeast produced a gas during respiration. Two syringes were filled with 20 cm3 of the active yeast culture and 
each syringe was placed into a large test tube containing water at 35 degrees Celsius. Both were placed in a water bath at 35 degrees Celsius as shown in this figure. The volume of gas in each syringe was measured every 5 minutes for 25 minutes. So now the question is, describe how the student could use the method above to describe the effect of pH on the respiration in yeast. Guys, you may pause the video and take 10 minutes to plan this investigation. As mentioned earlier, we need to identify the three different variables in this experiment, which are manipulated variables, responding variables, and also the control variables. So for this experiment, the manipulated variables is the pH of the solution. So when you plan an experiment, you need to give me at least three different pH. The responding variables will be the volume of gas produced. Bear in mind that we only use the word amount for those things in solid form. Usually, we will use the word volume to describe for liquid and also gas. So for control variables, we need to prepare at least three different control variables. For this case, the control variables are volume of yeast used, reaction temperature, size of the syringe used, volume of the pH solution, and etc. Below is the sample answer that I have prepared. Three 20 ml syringes are prepared, labeled as A, B, and C. It's better to state that clearly and label the test tube or syringes clearly so that the examiner would understand how to conduct this experiment. Each test tube is filled with 0.5 ml of different pH solution. Remember to state clearly the volume of the pH solution instead of writing the word same. Test tube A with pH 3 solution, test tube B with pH 7 solution, and test tube C with pH 10 solution. You need to state clearly what are the three different pH solutions, which is 3, 7, and 10 for this experiment. Each test tube is added with 10 ml of the active yeast culture, and each syringe was placed into a large test tube containing water at 35 degrees Celsius. For this sentence, we also state clearly the volume of the active yeast used for each test tube and also the temperature, which is the reaction temperature. All test tubes are placed in a water bath at 35 degrees Celsius. For this line, we mention that how we maintain the temperature. Bear in mind that for biology, we need to maintain the temperature by using the instrument called water bath. Then we have to state how we get the responding variable, how we measure the volume of gas produced. So the volume of gas in each syringe was measured every 5 minutes for 25 minutes. So we can measure for every 5 minutes up to 25 minutes. You have to state that clearly. As mentioned earlier during normal lesson, I always remind all of you, we must write down that we need to repeat the experiment for at least 3 times and always end with the safety precaution. For example, like wear glove and lab coat during the experiment. Guys, now let's see how we can get six mark for this experiment. If we can mention about the three different pH clearly, we can get one mark for it. If we could mention three different control variables for this experiment, we can get another two to three marks. For example, like here, I got mentioned the volume of yeast used, the reaction temperature, and also the volume of the syringes that I use. If I got mentioned how I maintain the temperature by using water bath, I might get another one more marks. I also got mentioned how I measure the volume of gas produced. So I measure it for every 5 minutes up to 25 minutes. And I always end the experiment by mentioning to repeat the experiment for at least 3 times and also wear glove and lab coat during the experiment. So for this sample answer, I might get more than 6 marks. However, bear in mind that the maximum marks for this question is 6. Guys, now let's try another question. This is the past year paper from October-November 2018, paper 6-1, question 2. Some students measured the average increase in chest circumference during breathing when at rest. Each student wrapped a tape measure around their body just below the armpit as shown in the figure 2.2. Each student then breathed out and took a measurement of their chest circumference. They then breathed in and took a second measurement. 
The difference between the two measurements is the increase in chest circumference. Now, you need to plan an investigation to describe how the student could find out the effect of the exercise on the chest circumference during the breathing. Bear in mind that you need to state the manipulated variables, responding variables, and at least three control variables before you start the experiment. Now, you may pause the video and plan the investigation. Good luck, guys! Now, let's discuss the answer. So, for this experiment, the manipulated variable will be the exercise intensity. The responding variable will be the increase in chest circumference. I have stated three different control variables, which are the age or gender of the students, duration of the exercise, and type of the exercise. Below is the sample answer that I have provided for all of you. Three 15 years old male students are selected for this experiment, labeled as A, B, and C. Each student are required to measure their chest circumference before the experiment. Then, the students are required to run on treadmill at the different speed. Student A run at the speed of 5 km per hour, Student B at 10 km per hour and student C at 15 km per hour for 5 minutes. Then, their chest circumference are measured by using measured tape. The students are then rest for 30 minutes before we repeat the experiment for the second time. The increase in chest circumference can be calculated by finding the differences between the measurement before and after exercise. We need to repeat the experiment for at least 3 times. Make sure the students wear proper sport attire and sport shoes during the experiment. So now guys, let's see how many marks we can get for this sample answer. First of all, I got mentioned clearly about the manipulated variable which is the different exercise intensity. I got mentioned that the students are running at different speed which is 5, 10 and 15 km per hour. I also can mention how we measure the increase in chest circumference. I can measure the increase in chest circumference by finding the difference between the measurement before and after exercise. In the experiment, I also got mentioned that they will measure their chest circumference before the experiment and also after the experiment by using measuring tape. In this experiment, I got state clearly the age and gender of the student, which is this. 15 years old male student. I also got mentioned clearly the duration of the exercise which is 5 minutes and also the type of exercise which is run on the treadmill. Always remember we need to repeat the experiment for at least 3 times. But for this experiment, it's a bit special. We don't wear lab coat and glove for running experiment. So for this experiment, we need to ensure that the students are wearing proper sport attire and sport shoe as a safety precaution. So what I want to say is that for the safety precaution, you need to customize based on the experiment. We do not need to wear lab coat and also glove all the time for all the experiment. Remember to smile while doing your exam paper. Remember to breathe, inhale and exhale because your brain needs energy through respiration. My year 11 students, good luck and all the best for your IGCSE. Thank you.